thank each and every one of you for tuning in today. I'm James L. Allen. This is James L. Allen Country Cooking and Variety Show. Uh, for a lot of you people out there that are good cooks, we're just trying to show you some different recipes. For some of those that you haven't learned to cook, follow us. You know, we'll teach you how to do everything, okay, step by step. But I appreciate you tuning in. We're getting a lot of views, and uh, that's what we need, okay? And uh, we appreciate it. Don't think that we don't. Okay, tell somebody about us. That's James L. Allen, Country Cooking and Variety. Hi, this is Chef Natanya Richards from Simply Delicious Catering. I want to thank you guys for checking me out so far. We've been having a great time cooking many things here, and today, we are gonna step outside the box a little bit. We're gonna cook something from West Africa, a little country called Ghana, and it's a, their chicken and rice dish. Now there is chicken and rice dishes from so many countries. I think every country has their own little special chicken. In fact, every little town <laughs> seems to have their own special chicken and rice dish. So we're gonna start with this one that I know of. And I'm gonna make a few little changes so those of you that are from Ghana and say, I don't make it like that, that's because I put my own spin on it. But basically, this is the general recipe, okay? So first, let's go season this chicken. Now remember before, I had talked to you about, I make a general seasoning with salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder or you can use garlic, salt, whatever you like. But I like mixing the three together, okay? So we're just going to season this. Now the reason I'm just seasoning it with this seasoning is because I don't want the chicken to be overbearing and take over too many of the other spices. And this looks good. I love the smell of this already. Okay, so we're gonna put the chicken in. Now I have it in at about 400 degrees, okay? And that oven is nice and hot. So what we're gonna do is start off cutting some onions. I have some already chopped up, but we're gonna do a few more. So what I cut up before was a larger onion, and this one is a little bit smaller. You can kind of be the judge. Two medium-sized onions are fine. I like onions, especially when they're sauteed. And now we're gonna do some tomatoes. Now, these are Roma tomatoes, and you can tell because they have like a, an egg shape. And I cut it in half, and then make about four slices. You're gonna be surprised on how easy this dish is. And depending on your love of spices, which I love things spicy, you can use red pepper like I'll be using today, or if you really like the heat, try some habanero, otherwise known as scotch bonnet in the Caribbean. I am a big fan of scotch bonnet, but not everybody can take that type of heat. So when you're cooking, you kind of got to know who you're cooking for. So what we're going to do is start cooking some rice and start off making our sauce, okay? And uh, it was time for me to roll up my sleeves because it's about to get real. Come on. Okay, so I have two cups of rice and three cups of water. And what I used today was a Calvaro's rice. And we have this on high. Now I put a little oil in it because again, that's traditional to Ghanaian cooking. So I'm gonna add this rice. We're gonna add some salt as well. And I'm gonna give this a little stir, and we're gonna wait for it to come to a boil. 
Now here, I'm gonna turn this heat up and I'm gonna add some oil. Don't panic, I know it seems like a lot, but it'll all work out. So when this starts getting warm, we're gonna start adding our tomatoes and our onions. This is gonna be delicious, you're gonna love it. First, we're gonna add our onions. And I have my garlic in here. And I'm just gonna break up the onions a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little salt. And what I'm looking for is basically for my onions to start getting clear. So we'll let that cook. Okay, so I love trying new food, especially from different cultures. I don't get to go out and travel. I haven't been around the world, but I do have many friends who have great parents and grandmothers and aunts that love to cook, and I'm always eager to learn. I hope you're enjoying learning too. Okay, so come look at these onions. Do you see how they're starting to fade a little bit in their color? Starting to become a little sheer, that's what you want. It means we're doing a great job. I'm gonna cover this rice and turn it down. We're gonna put it on low and let it cook the rest of the way. So as I said, this is a very simple dish. Starting with your onions, then we're gonna add our tomatoes and just keep building. So let's do that. I give this a nice stir. I am going to add a little bit of salt. Stir. And we're going to let that cook down. Okay, so let's get busy with the spices. Let's start off with a little curry. Now let me tell you a little bit about curry. You can get so many different kinds from the Caribbean, from India, from Asia. This particular brand I'm using actually comes from South America. Can you believe that? It's delicious and it's used a lot through the Caribbean. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this because this is the point where you wanna add the curry. Do you see how this is already starting to look like a gravy? And we're gonna sprinkle this in here, a good amount, and mix this all up. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit, probably to medium. And I'm gonna add a little bit more. Nice. I am gonna add some allspice. Allspice is used, again, in a lot of Caribbean cooking and African cooking. And Indian cooking, I should say that too. And probably three good pinches are in there. And a little nutmeg. We got a lot of flavors going on here. And this is where it gets hot, y'all. <laughs> Remember I said you could add the habanero, but if you're gonna do habanero or scotch bonnets, whatever you prefer to call it, you wanna add it in when you add in your onions. Now we got a lot of heat in this. So this is something that you'd want to make, especially during a winter or rainy night, something that's different. It's a different kind of comfort food. It warms the soul. You feel good. You're full. It's just good eats. Hey, who says that? <laughs> <laughs> you 
You know, even sometimes, because I really like a tomato-y flavor, you can add a little bit of tomato paste to this if you want. It makes the color a little bit more vibrant, and I like the little kick it gets. So probably about like maybe a tablespoon of tomato paste. Remember, I'm giving you a basic recipe, and it's up to you to make it yours. All right, let's add some spinach. Now, spinach is used in a lot of the stews that are traditional to Ghana, and not so much in this gravy, but I just happen to love it, and I like the color that it gives. And I'm just going to fold this in here. So we're going to let this cook for probably about like three to five more minutes, and then we'll be ready to plate and serve. I wish you were here to join me. In fact, why aren't you? <laughs> Okay, so it looks like this chicken is done. Nice and golden brown. Okay, so let's plate this rice. And then we're gonna add some of this gravy. One of these beautiful pieces of chicken. Look at this. Now look at this plate and doesn't that look delicious? Ghanaian chicken and rice. You've got to try it. I liked it. In fact, I loved it and I loved having you here. You can reach me on Facebook. That's Simply Delicious, Chef Natanya Richards, or you can contact me at 916 519-6262. I would love to hear from you. Remember, stay hungry, my friends. I'm here today with a good friend I've known for about four years now. Robin Metzer, she's got Robin's Fashion Boutique. Uh, she has models. She's got a new company, Robin's Productions. Robin's Nest Productions. Robin's Nest Productions. And uh, she's got a lot to say. She doesn't like to talk a lot, but when we're together, she talks a lot. Okay. She's really joking. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm here with uh, Robin and Claire. And Claire is uh, with uh, giving artists a, a chance, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Rob and I will talk a little bit later, but we're going to turn things over to you now, Claire. So how long have you been involved in, 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 in this uh, situation with what you're doing now with the artists? Well, actually, um, GSC has been about, I'm going to say maybe a year in the making or so. Uh, we've gone through a few different names, but uh, GSC is what we're officially filed as a nonprofit corporation at, under. Um, what GSC is all about is providing career enhancement and life balance class, uh, courses uh, and resources for different artists, artists of all different disciplines. So whether you're a visual artist, whether you paint, sculpt, dance, sing, play an instrument, we're providing resources to you and also not only career enhancement, but things like counseling, um, you know, mental wellness, nutrition and fitness sort of programming. So just to keep everything in your life on point. So. Well, how long have you, you said about a year you guys have been doing this, right? A little yes. over a year? Yes. Okay, what prompted you to do this to begin with? It's always been on my heart because mm -hmm. I'm an artist myself. Okay. So um, it's been difficult to just get out in the different industries, uh, finding the different people who I can network with, mm -hmm. as well as um, um, just a community that's supportive. Okay. So okay. that's another thing that we're okay. providing. Well, you got a good person here behind you, 
And uh, you know, Robin knows, she's been on my radio show quite a few times. You know, I've got a million listeners. And I'd like to have her on your radio show also, because, hey, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good situation. Not music, I deal mainly with musicians, okay? I'm a promoter. But uh, you're dealing with the whole artistic Community. end of the situation, yes. okay? And I think part of what I've, I've been doing since I started doing Robin's Nest Productions, named after Robin's Nest Boutique, mm -hmm. still in business over okay. eight years, I'm proud of that, is um, I started, my first event was in 2012, and I was voted top 20 events to attend that weekend. I'm very proud of that. Last year, yeah, last year my event was voted in the top 10. Okay. So I thought, okay, I have something here, so let me continue to do this. And one of the things that I like to do too is to help, uh, like I was a model promoter, mm -hmm. and I like to, to promote like up and coming singers and dancers and whatever the case might be. And well, so I think that's how we Claire first met, in, too. Yeah. Down at the radio station, that's you know, right. we were promoting uh, some artists then. Mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned in the models, folks, our very first episode, we've got 825 views, and we're getting about 35 to 40 views a day on all of our episodes. Okay. The models that you saw in the first episode, those are courtesy of uh, Robin Metz and Robin's Nest Boutique, OK? Wow. Mm -hmm. Back to you, Claire. Yes, OK. <laughs> Um, now, where can people, is there a number they can call to get a hold of you? You can come and you take a look at their work, or they can bring their work to you, or you can hear how they sound for his music or whatever. Well, actually, um, we're contacting artists. Uh, we have Facebook that's up and available. Um, just find, search for the GSC mm -hmm. Facebook page. And also, we're going around um, finding people. We're also work on our website. Mm -hmm. So that, there'll be different ways to contact so you, us. Is your website up yet? Or are you working on it now? Actually, we do have a website. It's gsc.webs.com. OK, so, wait, uh, sit up or, one more time. I'm oh, sorry. You might want to it's, spell it out. Right. Yeah. It's www.geac.webs.com. OK, OK. Mm -hmm. Now, what have you guys got any big events lined up coming up in the near future or what? Yes, we do. We have Sac Bay Has Talent, and that's going to be uh, one of the main venues next year in order for different artists to showcase their work. Okay, where, so, where would you be having this? We are going to have that in Vacaville at okay. Stars Recreation Center. Okay. Um, pretty soon we'll have submissions available for people to submit a quick video of their work so mm -hmm. they can be considered for the show mm -hmm. and um, also we have great chefs of Sacramento coming up okay so, tell, okay now you know you hit on, 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 on my special tell me about some of the chefs that you know because I just did a, a film a book signing for chef Richard Pennell right okay his brother was on the first episode right. Booker yeah Yes, he's definitely going to be one of our chefs. Um, okay. Robin knows a little bit more about the chefs. Okay, the chefs that we have are mm -hmm. is your regular Natanya Brown. Okay. She's on board. We have Richard K. Pennell, okay. Booker T. Pennell, mm -hmm. and we also have a chef Bennett, which I don't know yet, but I do know he's a really awesome chef um, in a restaurant because he's on Facebook. He posts these wonderful photos of all of these. Yeah. Our Foods last episode of Robin, we had a chef that's a friend of mine that's going to be working with me a lot, Chef Ernesto. Okay. He's worked with Booker. He's I've worked heard with of Ernesto. Mm -hmm. Ernesto's good. Mm -hmm. He did uh, what was the chicken parmesan he did on our last okay. show, uh, and he's going to be helping me a lot in the barbecue business and in the nightclub. But uh, I, really, as a favor, I'd really if you could have him in there with them, because these guys they all have worked together before in cook-offs and everything. I know you were mm -hmm. talking about a cook-off too. Were you able to connect? with the lady at uh, Fox 40? Um, no, was, no, I haven't. I think I... I talked to her a few weeks ago. I don't think I got it. I that. talked to her a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I will talk to her again, okay? okay. We'll get this thing going, okay? okay? And that right. event is going to be planned for sometime in March. We don't have the exact date yet, but mm -hmm. after this interview we're going to look at the a venue that okay, we have in okay, mind okay. Um, then our next event is going to be sometime in may to be announced as actual day and it's going to be called battle of the comedians oh, okay but it's okay. going to be adults only because i'm figuring if we're going to do a battle and 
that they yeah. need to feel comfortable yeah. in their genre to do whatever it is right. they want to do. So, well, yeah. well, Robin, you and I have worked together before. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we're all friends, okay? And Claire and I, we're friends, okay? Mm -hmm. But let us know when the events are all coming up. You know, call me ahead of time. I mentioned it on my radio show. Maybe we can come down and film Absolutely. for you and everything, you know? Well, Robin's the vice a president, time. so. Well, hey, <laughs> yeah. Robin and I talk every day. If yeah. not on the phone, we talk on whatever, Facebook. Whatever Claire is working on, mm -hmm. we're, we're all a team. In fact, we have exactly. a team of about eight members right now that's okay. working under Robin's Nest Productions, but also over under the GSC. Oh, James, yeah. and I have this coming up. I am the fashion show director at Fashion on the Fillmore, and it's taking place in San Francisco at um, the edition, formerly Yoshi's. Okay. And it's on December 7th, and okay. I'm very excited. There's gonna be about eight boutiques featured and lots of models. Okay, okay. Including me. Including Claire. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay. So we're gonna have a lot of fun. Definitely. Yeah, it sounds like it, it sounds like it. I'll I will try my very best to make it. You know, okay. it sounds like fun. It sounds like fun, yeah. Right. And you know, in the diabetes situation, my wife is diabetic, and um, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of ways. Uh, it's in the family, it's in the genes. Right. You know, her mom had it, both the sisters had it. But one thing about my wife, they're on insulin, and she was, you know, taking the tablets, and she was type 2. She started exercising, she started watching her diet. She hasn't taken any medication in two years now. Okay, mm -hmm. and the doctor says, You feel fine, so are you still taking your medication? Mm -hmm. She said, I haven't taken my medication in two years now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the show is put on by Fashion for Life, which is a prevention, uh, education, everything related to diabetes. Okay. So cool. it's all a fun. Good cause, so. good cause, yes. good cause. Well, hey, appreciate you guys coming down today. You know, it's raining outside and everything, but that didn't stop anything. The show goes on. That's right. Yep. Always. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Okay, now that we've wrapped up, I'm going to take you into the kitchen, and then I'm going to feed you well. Okay. okay. <laughs> Today I'm really proud to have a, a good friend from my church. He was on my radio show Monday, and I told him to come and be on my TV show today, uh, Dr. John Jackson. Thanks. And he's Dr. Deacon Jackson. He's a deacon Thanks. in my church, and that's the greatest Second Baptist church in Woodland, California, okay? Dr. Jackson has been in the military in Vietnam. Dr. Jackson has been in the correctional... Tally. Tally. Tally, okay. And he's been in the correctional department here, okay. And uh, he's got a PhD, very, very smart man, okay. And I'm glad to call him a friend, okay. Now, Dr. Jackson, I like to run my mouth. I know you do too, yes, but I this do. is for you. This is about you and what you want to say, okay? okay. I appreciate you coming down today, and you I'm know honored. you're welcome anytime. I'm okay. honored to uh, have a voice. Folks, Dr. Jackson. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon, and I'm happy to be here. I want to talk today about President Obama and his accomplishments and some other things about the president. The America, in America this time, the Democratic Party acted more like the Dixiecrats, and it has been disgusting to me and appalling to me how they have treated the president and how they ran away from all of his accomplishments and then talk about his achievements during the elections and all of those that lost. As a Democrat, I'm happy they lost because they didn't run on their accomplishments. The Republican Party has a major problem with Obama and it's not his policies or how he's running the country they simply cannot accept that a black or biracial man is now the leader of the greatest country in the world. And if you watch the TV during his first election, once he won, Mitch McConnell came out right away and said, the first thing I'm going to try to do is make sure he's a one-termer and I'm not going to agree with anything that he puts forth. And that is exactly what he's done. But in doing so, he has shown himself to be a white extremist supremist. And what that means is that he feels that no president 
should be a man of color, it should be a white person in charge. And our country has grown way past that, and that's why the Republican Party is having such a hard time getting a brand that will stick. I want to talk a little bit about the things that President Obama has accomplished. First, it's the Lilly Let Better Law. This law made it easier for women who are being paid less in the same jobs in America as men to file suit and take people to court even after time has passed. It allows them to go back, years back, and sue and get it straight. And in America, women are always treated different than men. He regulated the credit card industry in reference to their unbridled ability to raise interest rates. He signed a hate crime bill. The hate crime bill covered race, gender, age, and sexual orientation. He signed a bill to provide government-sponsored health care for more than four million additional kids. He signed a bill to cut the middleman out of the college loan business, the banks. So the interest rates automatically went down and he gave that charge to the Department of Education. Saved the American car industry, General Motors and Chrysler with the cash for clunkers bill. Saved America from a depression by signing the American Recovery Act, a depression that was brought on by George Bush and the Republican Party's economic policies. The Affordable Health Care Act, I think that's the greatest achievement that we've ever had in this country. It created a health care system and it made health care a possibility for most Americans. The Financial Reform Act, that act help straighten out Wall Street. Wall Street was able to do pretty much whatever they wanted to do to the consumers. Now they have a measure of regulations that they must follow. He appointed the first female Hispanic to the Supreme Court, Sonia Sotomayor. He signed the 9-11 Heath Bill. He reversed the ban on gays in the military. I'm a military guy, I served in the Army. It was full of gays. They've always served, but they had to serve in hiding. We all know that in America we have a race problem, and we really need to have a frank, long discussion and just talk about it and come along and try and figure out a way that we can all work it out. It's something that must be talked about. The far right has a plan, and that plan is to regain the control that whites had of the political spectrum in the 1900s. First, you had the Supreme Court rule in 2007 about community schools. That ruling allowed America to resegregate its schools, and now the schools in America pretty much were as segregated as they were in the 1960s. The Citizen United decision that allowed the white rich males to put as much money into politics as they wanted to. And I'm talking about the Koch brothers, Charles and David, Carl Rowe. They were, they were allowed to spend as much money and donate as much money to their favorite uh, political person and had put some attempts on uh, unions and corporations where they couldn't spend as much money as they wanted to. It tried to set up a process which would allow the 2012 presidential election to be bought. As you know, it fell. Mitt Romney did not win. The Supreme Court ruled, ruling on Section 5 of the Voters' Right Act, was designed to suppress the voting of minorities and allow the white-controlled Republican Party to control state elections. By voter suppression, and selecting the President of the United States and other national positions. Not to mention Chief Justice Thomas' court decision, which ruled that money equates to free speech. Chief Justice John Roberts is the 21st century Chief Justice that's akin to Roger B. Taney. Mr. Taney was pro-slavery. Chief Justice Roberts is pro 
white supremacy. He believed that they should just rule. Now I'm going to change the subject a little bit. I want to talk about the many felons in our country, most of them brown, black, white, and poor, who cannot vote in America. There's nothing in our Constitution to create this. This is a design plan that started back in the 1900s. And what it is about is stopping those people who would like to vote, who would likely vote for a progressive party from voting and have them be out of politics. And you're talking about between 5.8 million to 10 million people who no longer can vote in the United States. And I think that that act alone and that many people not participating in the political process is worse than the poll tax, worse than the literary tax that Negroes were required to take in the 1900s. The prison industry. The prison industry is the greatest waste of funding resources in America. Very little rehabilitation occurs in a prison. I worked in one for 30 years. In California, we spend $9,000 per year on our students, young students, and $62,000 per year on each inmate that's incarcerated. And that's if the inmate is healthy. We have spent $1 million on kidney transplants and heart transplants for inmates. The college electoral college process. This is what I refer to as racist white affirmative action program. It is a program that was put in place as an agreement with politicians from the North and the South to allow the Southern states, the red states, to have a greater say in the selecting process of the President of the United States. During those elections, those states have a greater say than they should have, especially in the South. America will never be a democratic country until we have one man, one vote, like they do in Iran. All Americans should have no fear of virus or Al-Qaeda as a black male. I have more fears about the Republican Party having control of both houses, the House and the Congress, the Senate and the Congress, than I, and being harmed by some cop who has an agenda who stops me while I'm driving. Moreover, be it not for George Bush and Dick Cheney, there would not be an ISIS. ISIS developed because of the actions of George Bush and Dick Cheney. When they eliminated Saddam, a man who was the president, they murdered him, of a sovereign country who did nothing to America, and created that vacuum, that's why you have all that chaos in the Middle East. And this war, this unnecessary war in the Middle East, has cost the American public nearly $2 trillion. It has destroyed over 300,000 Iraqi lives, 200 dead and 100,000 with severe injuries, such as legs blown off, arms blown off head wounds. To the upcoming election in Louisiana, her name, her name is Mary Landau. She should be referred to as a Dixocrat from Louisiana. When you go to the polls in the runoff, go and vote for a Republican candidate. She ran from President Obama, this time as if he had Ebola. So when you get to the polls, run from her and vote for someone else. She's a fraud. Uh, to the people of Ferguson, Missouri, and minority communities around the world, we know that young black men being shot to death by police is a serious problem in the United States. But to you people in Ferguson and every minority community in the world, the FBI has planted a seed about alleged agitators being all around the country. And what this has done is it made law enforcement trigger happy. And you don't want trigger happy law enforcement officers to add your name to the tally of young black men and women being shot to death in America. So when you go out and protest, 
be peaceful. Don't get yourself shot to death because that's what you've been set up to do. The National Guard has been called out. They've created a state of, of emergency and what that allows you to gather from what's being said is that they are not going to indict that man that killed that young man. So don't you have others die on your behalf. And just a little short response to something Sheriff Scott Jones of Sacramento said yesterday in a video. He referred to the immigrants and he said that you cannot tell the good immigrants from the bad ones. And what he sounded like was Bull Connors in Alabama in the 19, late 1950s and 60s when he was talking about blacks. There are a lot of excellent immigrants over here and the ones that are over here and are working and paying taxes should be allowed to stay here. And we don't need some empty head like Scott Jones trying to create policy on immigration. He should call the Republican leadership in his party, in Congress and in the Senate, if he wants something passed. And Obama should do whatever he can to make sure that the people who are already here are able to remain here. Black people are not gonna wake the fields anymore. The whites never did, and if the Mexicans would stay in Mexico for one year, they'd be flying them over first class so that they could do the work in the fields. And that is my say, and I thank you for giving me my voice. Okay, folks, I'm James L. Allen. This is James L. Allen Country Cooking and Variety Show. I'd like to thank my guests for being on the show today. Uh, we started off with Dr. John Jackson. He's a deacon at my church, Greater Second Baptist Church in Woodland, California. I'd like to thank Robin Metzer and her friend Claire. She's at Robin's Fashions and Models and Robin's Productions. I'd like to thank, first of all, and most of all, Post 4647 of VFW here in Antelope, California, okay? Now we got you, our regular good cook, Natanya Richards, okay? We appreciate you tuning in. Tell someone about us, your family, friends, whatever. You know where to pick us up. We're at YouTube, James L. Allen Country Cooking and Variety, okay? <laughs>